Did you know that there are many, many characters that are referenced throughout the reveal trailer for multiverses that may or may not hint at an upcoming playable character? Seriously, it's true. There's many references. I promise. That's why I went ahead and created this little, we'll say list of everything, of all the references, all the characters that I noticed. And maybe if you, I missed something and you guys picked up on something, feel free to let me know down in the comments. But uh, what do you say we begin with the Joker? Now, this one's going to be an obvious one, and I promise there, there's probably a few on this list that maybe you already took note of, but hopefully there's a few on here that you may not have noticed. So we'll start with the easy one, Joker. Joker's photo is actually on the Batcave stage itself, where it's actually, it's actually a photo from the animated series. So this one's easily noticeable when looking at the Bat computer on the Batcave stage. It appears that uh, Batman is kind of tracking Joker from these monitors, which actually kind of gives it a cool touch to the stage. It, 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 it keep, continues feeling like this is a Batman stage, right? Of course, Batman would want to keep an eye on the Joker. So it's kind of a cool little reference nonetheless. This one, again, is fairly easy to spot. But did you know there are at least three more character references just from this Batcave stage alone? Did you also notice? Alfred the Butler. All right, all right, probably the second one that's easy. But I promise, from here forward, we got some better ones. We got some better ones. But Alfred, nonetheless, Batman slash Bruce Wayne's faithful butler. Alfred also has his uh, own little picture on, uh, it seems like it's our own little monitor, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's over on the left-hand side of the screen. Nothing crazy about this one. It's just kind of another nice touch for uh, the Batman stage, kind of getting some major characters from the show, from the series, uh, just kind of incorporated into one spot. So uh, it's, it's a pretty nice touch. But what if I told you there's still one more person's picture? Have you already noticed this one? If not, let me inform you that it is indeed Catwoman. She's kind of got her own smaller uh, little screen, her own little monitor here. But another Batman character that we definitely see is none other than Catwoman herself. This one, I actually didn't notice for uh, for quite a while, but uh, once I, I did, it kind of had that uh, idea that basically spawned this video. If these characters are in the background of this stage, does that kind of lead to a hint as a playable character? Or is this just more of a cool reference to them for the stage? So are they unlikely to be playable? or is there possibly some hints at what might be coming in the future? Now, we might not have a concrete answer to this question, but remember, anybody that's coming from the Smash Bros background, we've had characters that appear on stage and even in the background of stages that have ultimately become playable characters. For example, remember King Dedede in the Kirby, the Kirby stage for Smash 64? Yeah. He's in the background kind of floating around doing his own thing, but yet King DDD is still playable. And don't forget about the whole Toon Link on the Spirit Tracks. If Toon Link is not a selected character, he appears on the train itself. But if he's, well, selected, then Alfonso or whatever his name is appears. So it's, it's a cool thing. It's in Smash Bros. game, so I mean Smash is its own things. We don't need to always compare multiverses to Smash, but uh, it, it could be a nice little thing to at least put to rest that just because they might appear in the background doesn't mean they can't be playable going into the future. Number four is going to be Batman Beyond. That's right, Terry McGinnis. Now, this one's going to be a little bit hard to kind of make out, but I think most of us could agree, especially those are, that are familiar with the Batman Beyond and especially his suit, uh, the the design of the character, we'll, we'll know what it looks like, right? But uh, one of the suits in the background of the stage here at the, I think it's the like stage select screen or whatever it might be for the Batcave. It appears to have the Batman Beyond suit up towards the top there. There's a few other ones, but those look like regular Batman suits to me, right? But then in actual gameplay, check this out. The supposed Batman Beyond suit, it's not even there. It's like it was swapped out with another regular Batman costume. So is this a reference to Batman Beyond that you can only see during the stage select screen? Or is this possibly a tease for Terry McGinnis's Batman Beyond character? 
or maybe even at, at least a Batman Beyond character skin as an alternate costume. That would be dope. I'd buy that. All right, this one I wrote down as number five, but it's not really a thing. I just wanted to point this out real quick. It's not even an Easter egg or a reference, but it's just a funny little thing I noticed. Look at the mouse cursor on screen. <laughs> I, I never noticed that until like uh, about, about a week ago. I was watching the trailer. I was like, is that, the, is that my mouse cursor? No, it's actually uh, it's a part of the reveal trailer. So just thought I'd throw that in there because I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> Next up is the giant horn that has frost coming out of it, uh, of the end of it. And this one is a Game of Thrones reference, which is referring to Joramun. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not a big Game of Thrones fan, but Joramun is actually a king from beyond the wall. Now, this seems more like a fun Easter egg and a reference for fans of Game of Thrones that actually know the, the series history and the lore behind a lot of stuff. So this is more possibly just a really cool Easter egg more than a reference to anything, but nonetheless, it's still a nice thing that we get to notice and uh, still trying to wonder what uh, Trophy's Edge is all about. Is it story related? I think it might be. I had a video about that about last week, I think. Sticking to the Trophy's Edge stage, one of the, one of DC's biggest and baddest villains, Brainiac. He is actually known for collecting cities in jars. And look at that, we happen to have a city in a jar on the uh, Trophy's Edge stage. Now, Brainiac, what he does is he collects these cities and he intends on using them to restore his unnamed planet that he ends up ruling. So he's taking cities from all over and he's placing them on his brand new planet that he rules. So the city that uh, is on the Trophy's Edge stage is a clear reference to the alien android himself. But let me raise you this question. Could this also be a hint at a potential character? Or what about this? Is this a hint at one of the bosses if there is an, indeed a story mode coming to multiverses? Is Brainiac going to be a, a boss that we might have to fight along the way? I don't know. That could be kind of interesting. And the last one for the Trophy's Edge stage is, of course, the Acme box. And I guess this one's going to be a stretch as to who it might actually be referring to. Maybe it's just referring to the Acme Corporation in general. But if we're gonna talk about Looney Tunes and Acme, I guess we'll say uh, Wiley e. Coyote. I think that makes the most sense. I think that's the Looney Tune that gets most associated with the Acme Corporation. So we'll give him the nod here for this being a possible reference to Wiley. But then again, it could just be a reference to Acme Corporation in general. So we'll have to see what uh, this ends up becoming at some point. Cause again, we only have one confirmed Looney Tune on the roster. And I can't see them only having one Looney Tune on the roster. The Ice King is up next. Now on the Treehouse stage in Multiverses, Finn and Jake's Treehouse, we can clearly see the Ice Kingdom as well as Ice King's castle itself over on the left hand part of the stage, of course. Now this may just be a really cool perspective of what Finn and Jake can actually see from their Treehouse from, you know, from the show itself. Could just be kind of like oh yeah they can see it off in the distance so they wanted to throw it in for the stage that'd be a really cool nod uh, to the series but let me raise you this we didn't act we don't actually see the ice king himself he's not actually like flying around in the background his head doesn't pop out of the castle or nothing so maybe this is a reference to possible future character and again this is i'm not trying to say this is i'm just saying what if it's a reference to ice king himself that will end up coming with an Ice Kingdom stage in the future, but uh, either way, it's still a cool nod to the character. Number 10, actually this is number nine, isn't it? I wrote down 10, whoops. <laughs> but number nine is actually the snail. We're sticking to Finn and Jake's treehouse here, but it's the snail from the show. This one I found pretty, pretty cool to see. But uh, this one is, of course, like I said, the snail, which itself, the snail is a running gag on the Adventure Time show, which uh, it has this little guy kind of just waving to fans at uh, various points throughout episodes, which is kind of a cool thing to notice. And, uh, you know, we can see them. We can see the snail actually doing that in the trailer. So uh, it's it's just a cool thing that they took a, a running gag from the show and then they ended up putting it into multiverses as a part of one of the stages. That's actually pretty awesome. Tip of the cap to the development team for that one. And the last one that I have for you guys is Lady Rainicorn, who appears in the background. 
and she's just kind of, you know, flying through the air, doing doing Lady Rainicorn things, whatever that might be. But yeah, just flying through the air. It's kind of the the same sort of vibe as I mentioned King DDD earlier, just kind of flying around in the background. That's all this is probably going to be, just a cool touch. Something in the background to look forward to, maybe popping up rarely throughout the stage as the fight continues to go on. But uh, again, one more character that gets referenced, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Haha! -ha! Bonus time! For anybody that stuck around this late into the video, I have one bonus reference, or dare we say, could we say this is a possible leak? Now, hear me out. Here's the screenshot. Take a look over on the right-hand side. This image, where I'm looking at, is blurry, but can you kind of make out what the blurry image is? It looks like a player profile icon, and if we really kind of focus on it, does this look like Rick and Morty side by side for the player profile icon picture? I think it could be, and the only reason I say that is because you can clearly see the cyan color. It's the exact same hair color that Rick has from Rick and Morty. This may be a, there's a reason they blurred this, right? Whether it's a league for Rick or Rick and Morty, whatever it might be, they, they blurred it for a specific reason. They didn't want, I guess, speculation to run wild, but uh, too bad. We caught you on this one. 